Let's see. I see Nicholas is ready and he's shining. Alexia is ready and she's shining. Morelli's ready and she's shining. Very nice. All right. So guys, this morning we're going to be reading a sea of plastic and our learning target is, I can answer text dependent questions and justify my answers by providing text evidence. And that's our state standard that says, we need to be able to comprehend what we read and know why we're understanding what we read. We have to be able to answer questions and ask questions and know why it connects, why those questions connect to the text that we're reading. Okay, can I get everybody to read this with me? Get your air fingers ready. Right up here. One, two, three. Oh, wait, let's start one more time. One, two, three. I can answer text dependent questions and justify my answers by providing text evidence. Perfect. So, when we start our lesson, we're already seeing some visuals that are getting our brains thinking. Think about these pictures up here. Just think about that. <clears throat> now think about these pictures down here. In your mind, I want you to think, how are these pictures or visuals similar? And how are they different? All right, talk with somebody real quick next to you. How are they similar and how are they different? Make sure you're turning and talking. I love how I see Brian and Brittany turning and talking. Putting heads together. Oh, you're seeing lots of trash? Okay, how else is it different? Mm -hmm. Very nice. All right, three, two, one. Anai, what, what, were, what is something you said or your partner said? Okay, so the bottom pictures are dirty and the tops are clean. Thank you. What else? Who notices something else? Javi? That's right. So as we're thinking about the things we're going to learn today, we want to be connecting to the things that we've been learning for the past couple weeks. So before we get started into our deep scientific discussion, here's our agenda, so what we're going to do throughout our lesson. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a discussion. What do we know so far? Because as we come to this discussion and this lesson, we're scientists. And these are the types of things scientists do in their brains to help them track their evidence. Then the second part we're going to do is group practice, where we play our card game, show me the evidence. And then there's going to be a teacher model where I do a think aloud for you so you get to see inside my mind how I answer text dependent questions, just like you're going to do from our target. And then we're gonna have some partner practice where you try one with your shoulder partner. And then we're gonna have some independent practice where you get to try them all on your own and show that you can shine. <clears throat> so the first part of our discussion, we need to talk about the scientific method because this is the method that all scientists all the way up to ASU and all those really famous scientists like Albert Einstein use. So they start with a purpose. What is the problem? And we all know what the problem is. What's the problem? Raise your hand. What's the problem? Alex? Exactly. So we know the problem, right? So now we're in the research stage. We're doing lots of research from other scientists who have already studied this problem so that we can come up with the best solution in the very end. Once we do that, we'll form a hypothesis, we'll experiment, um, we'll analyze what's happening, and we'll draw a conclusion. Did we come up with a good 
solution for this problem. So like I said, right now we're in the research portion of the scientific method. And in that portion, scientists must research a topic thoroughly or carefully. Thoroughly means carefully. Before they can start the scientific method and start solving problems. And this is one of the most famous scientists ever. He's created a lot of very strange things that some people just couldn't believe even existed. And his advice to us today is, the important thing is to never stop questioning. So no matter what, all throughout our lesson and all throughout our lives, we have to keep asking questions because that's how we make things better and better and better. Okay? All right, so we're going to talk about what we already know. And to do that, we need to go to our research board. Just like real scientists, they have a place where they keep all their research so that they can keep that learning and in a summary in their mind. All right, so when I call your row, you're going to carefully come sit right down here, just like we always do, very politely. All right, reading squad, come on down. Make sure you're making good choices about who you sit by and keep your partner near in case you have to have a conversation. All right. Um, science cheetahs. And last but not least, math sharks. I love how everybody's going so politely and calmly, and people are even shining here. I love that. That shows that you want to be very respectful. Very nice. All right. So looking at all the things we've collected... We've got our water cycle, our brace map structure, some brace maps we've created, some visuals, our world map, our collection of plastic from home and school, and we've got our mindset because scientists have to have a, a good mindset, a growth mindset, otherwise they'll get, you know, worried and they'll start to give up. All right, looking at all of that learning, talk with your partner. Think about what we learned first, second, third, and how these things are all connected. Talk with your partner. <laughs> Anai? Analia? You're fine. That's okay. Talk. All right, three, two, one. Olivia, what would you say we learned so far about? We learned about how sea stars lose their arms and how they get these teeth pierced syndrome. Yes, that's right. Remember, that's the very first thing we learned about, sea stars losing their arms from wasting syndrome. Does anybody remember what was causing that? What we discovered was the cause? Alexia? From a disease. From a disease. What was causing the disease? Brittany? How, how warm the water is. And there's a scientific word for how warm or cold something is. Does anybody know the scientific word? Mm -hmm. Javi? Temperature. temperature. I like that. All right, so we learned about the sea stars and the temperatures changing in the ocean. Javier, what else? Mm -hmm. So we're learning about things that we can do to help the ocean or solve the problem. All right. Omar. Where's Omar? <laughs> Omar, what have we learned so far? That all of the plastic. That all of the plastic. Oop, all of the plastic is causing issues. Who remembers where this plastic came from? <laughs> Anai? Um, from the playground. 
Yeah, just on our little playground in two days, we collected all this plastic. And thinking about something that we learned, where might this plastic had, have ended up? Jonathan? In the sea. Bless you, in the sea. So it may have ended up in the sea. How would our plastic on our playground have ended up in the sea? Talk with your partners. Um, I think it's the, um, the wind that's blowing it to take Very nice. All right, three, two, one. Let's see. So, oh, Sabrina's not here. Jaden, how might our plastic end up in the sea? Hmm, how would that happen? Can you come up here and show us how it would happen, maybe in the cycle? How would our trash get to that ocean? Oh, so our trash is here, right? Mm -hmm. And how does the water cycle move our trash to the ocean? I don't understand. Can you use the words? Condenses, precipitation, so how cold it is determines whether it's rain, sleet, snow, or hail. And then what happens after it's precipitation? That's right. Thank you, Jaden. Nice work. All right. So. He is talking about this runoff. What does this runoff have to do with our plastic? Um, Nicholas? Yeah, it pulls the trash into waterways that take it to the ocean. Is there one more thing that has to do with weather that could take our plastic into the ocean? Alexia? Want me to come back? Okay. Mia? The wind. The wind. That's Wait, right. Not. That's right. Because we learned that the ocean is pretty much downhill from everything. And there's rivers running everywhere. And the wind is blowing our trash around. And our trash is getting into the rivers. And the rivers are taking it to the sea and the ocean. And that's how it ends up collecting there. Very nice, guys. I am so impressed with this conversation. Turn to your partner and tell them one last thing you're dying to say about this conversation. Go. You want to let Christopher go first so you have time to think? What I wanted to say is not only the wind can push it, if, it, if it's raining super hard and it can go super fast, I think the water's going to get flooded and maybe the water could push the trash can over. That's a very true prediction. I like that. Well, not just the wind and the rain can just um, get the water and the trash. It can, um, it, maybe a tornado will come and then it might like get the trash like what it like make it fall into the ocean. You're right. Very nice. All right, guys. If you can hear me, hold up one. If you're listening, hold up two. Fantastic job of pulling all that learning back into your mind and getting it all set up in, in a summary in your brain so that now we're going to learn some new things and connect it to that other stuff that we already know. I'm super impressed. All right, if you are from the Math Sharks, please carefully return to your seat and grab your article because as soon as we're all back to our seats, we're going to silently read. All right, reading squad. And science cheetahs. Nice work, guys. <clears throat> All right. 
So now we've done our discussion. So in a minute, we're going to do our group practice. Show me the evidence. But before we do, we have to get ourselves back into this article, a sea of plastic. So that means we need to silently read it and then read it together. So I'm going to give you about three minutes to silently read this text so you can get your brain back into your annotations and back into all the thoughts you were thinking about that text. I like how Anai is tracking her words. I like how I see Alexia adding annotations for something else she noticed. Javier's doing a great job underlining and making a little note of an idea he had, writing in his margin. guys let's read it all together and let's do it in a close read where I read and then when I leave out a word you guys fill it in for me okay make sure you're tracking so that it's one strong voice when we do it <coughs> here we go I'm gonna start with the title a sea of plastic take a look around your school or you probably see plenty of, plastic. including toys Bottles. and bags. But what happens when the plastic gets thrown away? Scientists say a lot of it ends up in Earth's oceans and causes big problems for creatures like sea turtles, fish, and birds. Plastic is a Great. to hundreds of ocean species, says Allison Schutz of the Ocean Conservancy. That's a group that works to protect the world's oceans. All right, we're to our third paragraph, but our first big heading, plastic pollution. A recent study, what is that word? Estimates. Estimates. That's like what we're doing in math right now. We're, they're guessing. They're making an educated guess. Very nice. A recent study estimates that about 16 Billion. pounds of plastic Billion. its way into the ocean. Most of the plastic starts off as litter in towns and cities. Rainwater and wind Carry. the plastic into the ocean or into rivers. So in our group practice, you're going to need your article and your brain and these cards. I'm handing the cards to the person who will be number one. <clears throat> I know there are some groups who have three, but remember if there isn't a four, the whole group then has to decide whether it's prove it or academic feedback. All right, guys, here's our big time. Ready? Groups transform. I like how everyone's being so careful as they go. Very nice. All right, so before you get started, let's have all eyes up here and go over the jobs one more time, Jaden. So let's look. Number ones, raise your hand. So number ones, you're going to fan out the question cards and be a helper. That means as soon as number two reads that question, you should be looking for the answer in the article as well. So you can help just in case someone needs you. All right, number twos, raise your hand. 
Only one number two in the world? Oh, there we go. So number two is you're going to pick a card and read the question out loud. Your team may need to see the question because I'm a very visual person and I have to read the question a couple of times. I can hear it and then I have to read it. So you might have to show your team the question. All right, number three, here's the big time. Number three is you're going to answer the question and prove it with text evidence by citing where you found the answer in the text. So you have to say something like, it's right here in paragraph seven, or I found it in the caption, or maybe you found it on the map. And number four is, raise your hand if you're a number four. So if there's not a number four in your team, that would be everybody. So the threes, you'd raise your hand because that's everybody. All right. Your job is to say prove it or give your teammate academic feedback by saying, I like the way you justified your answer by proving it. So your job is very important as well because you need to listen and make sure that they're actually proving it. And if they don't, you have to say prove it. If they do, then you can be like, good job. I like how you justified your thinking. All right. After each round, switch numbers clockwise just like the clock we've been studying. All right, go ahead and play. I like how you justified your answer by proving it. Very nice. Now, did you show them? Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Stay focused. I want to see how you guys play. <coughs> it's about when plastic gets thrown away, scientists say a lot of it ends up in the Earth's oceans. What do you say? So now what can you tell? I like the way you justified your answer by proving it. Very nice. I like it too. Nice justification. I love how I see people returning to the text. If they can't find the answer, they go back to the beginning and reread. All right, guys, if you can hear me, hold up one finger. If you're listening, hold up two. You guys have done a great job. You were asking questions, justifying yourselves. You were asking your teammates to prove it if they didn't. And you were even telling them academic feedback about how good they were doing with what they were doing. I love it. All right, go ahead and pin up your cards. And in just a moment, I'm gonna say the keyword untransform and you're gonna go back to your desks. All right, untransform. Just leave it on the corner of your desk. I'll get it. All right, take your paper and pass it down.
So now we're to the portion of the lesson where I'm going to do my think aloud model. But we're, I'm going to do it right here on your paper with you. One, pass it down. All right, first group who's ready gets 20 points. Ready and shining. Remember, grab one and pass it down. Oh. Science cheetahs look like they're just about ready. Ooh, it was a tie for first place. Science cheetahs and math sharks. And then reading squad was closing in close at the end. All right. So I'm going to use two justify my thinking red today. So go ahead and pull out your red, but then I expect pencils and everything to be down while I'm doing my think aloud. All right, let's roll the dice to see which one I'm going to do for you for my think aloud. Number five. All right, everybody, let's read number five together. Ready? One, Two, three. Why is the plastic trash such bad news for marine life? So I'm seeing it's asking me why. And some words I think I'm going to look for in the text. And I'm going to wait till everything's quiet. Because I want to make sure you're watching and listening. So that your brain can think like my brain when you try to do it. Just waiting on a couple boys. So, why is the plastic trash such bad news for marine life? So, I think I'm going to look for in the text, bad news for marine life, because that's what it wants to know about. Why is it bad for marine life? So, those are my key words I'm going to look for. All right, so the first thing I have to do is start reading, looking for my key words. And I'm actually going to put my key words up here so I can look at them when I'm doing it. All right, take a look around your school or home. You probably see plenty of plastic. I love how Jasmine's so still and watching. She's gonna do great when it's her turn. Including toys, bottles, and bags. But what happens when that plastic gets thrown away? Oop, scientists say a lot of it end up, ends up in Earth's ocean and causes big problems for creatures like sea turtles, fish, and birds. So I'm gonna underline this. But it doesn't really describe the problem to me. So I'm going to keep going. I think I could get a better answer than that. Plastic is a threat to hundreds of ocean species, says Allison Schutz of the Ocean Conservancy. That's a group that works to protect the world's oceans. Plastic pollution. Well, this one might talk about it because it's talking about the pollution. A recent study estimates that about 16 billion pounds of plastic makes its way into the ocean every year. Most of the plastic starts off as litter in towns and cities. Rainwater and wind carry the plastic into the ocean or into rivers that lead to the ocean. Once it is under the waves, plastic can break into smaller and smaller pieces. Well, that's a problem, but it's not really talking about the animals yet. Oh, wait, look. All that plastic is bad news for marine life. Oh, that's exactly what my question said. So this is where I'm going to find my answer. Some creatures die when they get tangled in bag handles or old fishing nets. Others accidentally consume plastic. I like that answer right there. <clears throat> so I'm going to underline. Some creatures die when they get tangled in bag handles or old fishing lines. And that's in paragraph four. So I'm going to go back to my questions. And I'm going to write in my prove it. 
paragraph four, because that's where I found it. And then I'm going to write my complete sentence. So plastic trash, starting with a capital letter, is bad news for marine life <clears throat> let me make it a little bigger because right from my text because I'm explicitly proving my answer some creatures get tangled and you guys can start catching up looks like you already did go ahead thank you <clears throat> in bag handles or old fishing lines and nets. And my prediction is, it doesn't say it in this article, but just thinking like a scientist, my prediction is once they get tangled in those nets and trash, they probably can't live a very healthy life. <clears throat> so it probably makes them sick or maybe even die at some point in time. All right, now I'm gonna go back and check. Did I put a capital letter at the beginning? I sure did. And did I put a punctuation at the end? Right there, I sure did. Uh-oh. I wrote my prove it on the wrong line. Yeah. Remember, mistakes mean our brain is growing. Now I'll never forget to make sure that that prove it is on the right line again. All right, so that was my think aloud model. So our next step, I'll give you about 10 seconds to finish catching up. And if you, you don't have to copy from here, where could you get your answer? Brian, from the text. And remember I proved it so you know right where to go in paragraph four. <clears throat> We did the teacher model. Now it's time for partner practice. You get to try one with your shoulder partner. So let's roll the dice to see which one you get to do with your shoulder partner. Number four. All right, don't go yet. Hold on. I have some expectations for you with your shoulder partner. <clears throat> so shoulder partner practice. Let's read number one together. All eyes up here. Ready? One, two, three. Read the question together. Choose the clue words that will help you find the answer in the text. Just like I did when I did mine. Two, reread the text all the way through until you find the answer to the question. Three, Use dark blue to underline your evidence. Four, write your answer in a complete sentence. Five, cite your evidence on the prove it line. So these are the steps that I took when I was doing my think aloud. So these are the steps I want you to take while you're doing your partner work with number four. Yes, Brian. No, that's a site for citing evidence. It's different, but I like that you're thinking that way. That's thinking like a scientist. All right, go ahead and get started with your shoulder partner. Mia, why don't you bounce over there to Anna? And then you can stay there for the rest of the lesson. You guys are gonna be in a triad, okay? Dark blue. Guys, you have about three minutes. <clears throat> Number four. Right here. Right 
get going. You only have three minutes. Mm-hmm. Guys, remember you're doing number four. I like how I see Alex and Analia already digging into the text. Well, don't just discount his answer. Maybe it's in multiple places. What did you find, Javi? I found the beaches on, and the river bay all of them um, all over. 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 Volunteers take off all litter before they can get to the beach. Okay, so that's a good, good win, but think about this. This question was, when does 16 billion pounds of plastic make its way into the ocean? So they're wanting to know about that 16 billion pounds of, of trash. So that's going to be one of your clues to help you find where the answer is located in the text. So use your clue words to help you figure out if that's the correct win. So will you guys show him what paragraph and see if he agrees with you? Where, Javi? Show me where. Okay. Where do you see the clue words? Oh, yeah, right there. 16 billion pounds of plastic makes its way. Read it for me. Into the ocean every year. Most okay, stop of there. So the question was what? When does it, how many? Nope. When? When does it, six mi 16 million pounds of plastic Make it go to the ocean, to, into the ocean. And so this says 16, 16 pounds of plastic make its way it's out to, to into the ocean every, every year. year. Very nice. All right, guys, looks like just about everybody's done. So we're going to move on to the next portion, which is, if you need just a few more seconds to finish up, keep finishing up, but we're going to move on. So the last part of our lesson is independent practice on your own. And I put a super smiley face there because when you're doing these third grade standards on your own, that means you're growing into a big strong third grader who someday will make it to fourth grade and be a scientist in fourth grade. All right. So here are your student work expectations for the last four questions. And I'm going to wait till I have everybody's eyes. So I'll give you about 10 seconds to finish writing. Then I need your eyes. Got everyone in Math Sharks. Got everyone in Science Cheetahs. Just waiting for a couple people in Reading Squad. All right, so all eyes up here, pencils down. Let's read the check marked, the first check mark together. Ready? One, two, three. Questions are answered with the correct text evidence. So that means you have the correct answer. Second check mark. Answer is proven with text evidence underlined in color. So you're proving it to me with your colored pencil and making sure to match the color to your number so I know what evidence goes with what number. All right, third check mark. Ready? One, two, three. Perfect. So that's that paragraph seven. I found it in the caption. I found it in the map right here where it says prove it all right next one one two three hold on that one was a little weak one two three beautiful so that means if it asked you where was the coral reef you wouldn't just say australia you would say 
the coral reef is located next to Australia. All right. Next one. Ready? One, two, three. Handwriting is neat. Handwriting is neat. We all want to see your wonderful thinking and your wonderful work. We don't want to have to go, what was she saying? All right. Last check mark. One, two, three. Students are thinking like scientists as they complete thoughtful work. So that just means, like Albert Einstein said, you're always questioning and you're always doing your best. And here is a little rubric to help you know how to score the highest you can. So we've got highly proficient, all eyes up here. Just waiting on one boy. Highly proficient, proficient, partially proficient, and minimally proficient. So to get a highly proficient, you have to give me four correct and justified responses. So the four answers you're going to be giving me all by yourself, you have to get all four of them correct and justify them. That is no problem at all. I expect all of you to do that. You've been showing me this whole morning. You know how to do this. Proficient. Three correct and justified responses. Partially proficient. One or two correct and justified responses. The only way you will get a minimally proficient is if you show little or no attempt to try and follow the directions and do your best. That's impossible for this class because you guys are incredible. All right. Go ahead and get started all by yourself. You choose the colors you're going to justify with. You only have 10 minutes, so don't waste any time. If you finish before I say stop, if you flip it over, there's a summary page on the back with some grammar checks. I like how mass sharks are silent. They're not disrupting anyone's thinking. So, <clears throat> Analia, where? This is a where question. So, what text feature always shows us a where that could help you get that answer quicker? What text feature do we have that will show us where something is? Please. Mm -hmm. uh, aware is a place, but what text feature, like what on this page shows you where something is? Like if you're driving in the car with mom and she can't find, or grandma, and they can't find where they want to go, what do they pull up on their phone? A map, that's right. So maybe if you're looking for a where, check to see if you can find it down here on the map. It's this one. And then show me you're ready by shiny. I need everybody shiny by the time I get to zero. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's okay if your materials aren't all the way put away yet and zero. All right. The very last part of our lesson is our lesson closure. So we're going to go back to our research wall and we're going to add some new information from what we learned today. So just like earlier, when I call your row, bring yourself, your brain, and this time I want you to bring your article. So think about our target today. Our target was to be able to answer text-dependent questions and prove it by referring to the text, right? So our exact one was, I can answer text-dependent questions and justify my answer with text evidence. So as I was walking around, I saw everybody making that target. So who can raise their hand and tell me, how are we meeting that target today? How are we answering questions 
and proving it with text evidence. What were we doing to show our text evidence? Stephanie? Yeah, that's right. We were underlining our text evidence with the colored pencils. I love it. So, yes, Mia. And we were writing what number paragraph it was in. Exactly. We were writing what number paragraph it was in. Christopher. That if you forget, we won't because that's why we underlined it. That's right. You can't forget because we underlined the evidence so you can go straight back to it in the text. You guys are so amazing. All right. Before we go ahead and close out our lesson, I want you to turn to someone next to you and tell them two good things they did during this lesson. All right, three, two, one. So I see Brian's still kind of over there on the edge. So Brian, two good things you did during this lesson where you were able to justify your thinking with text evidence and you were a good partner when you were at your seat. Thank you so much. All right. If you are from Mass Sharks, go ahead and return to your seats.